incorporate the world. Oh, oh, the my dead body, oh, the my dead body, oh, the my dead body, oh, the mind. They have all the money. We have the will, and I would rather be a match than a paper dollar bill. Yes, I would any day. Yes, I would. Director of the Transition Year Program. Thank you very much, and I'm really honored to be here tonight. I want to say, uh, first of all, that um, the, the kids, not kids, I'm sorry, <laughs> the youth, <laughs> I love you guys, they're awesome. And uh, I want to, my topic tonight, I'm just going to talk for a little bit, is about Aboriginal education. And there's two ways that I look at it. There's well, actually three. One is my own experience as a mid-back student at Dalhousie. And when I walked in tonight, and I've seen so many people here to support I Don't Know More, I just was overwhelmed with joy and hope. And the reason I say that is because I remember sitting in the sub 30 years ago, and <laughs> five of us were sitting in the sub, drinking coffee, smoking cigarettes. Um, <laughs> and it was cool then. And when I think of how far we've come, it amazes me. And uh, so that's the first thing that I thought about. Second thing is, Aboriginal education has been one of the major tools of assimilation used by the government. And I've always said, you know, like Duncan Campbell Scott would say that we're going to continue, and he was the Deputy Superintendent of Indian Affairs, we're going to continue residential schools until there's not a single Indian left in the body politic. So education has always been used as a tool of assimilation. Residential schools, and I'm very tied into the issue of education because, first of all, my job, my experience, and the fact that I want to participate in the education of people above the issues that we face as Aboriginal people. I am Micmac. I am from Bodoladec in Cape Breton. I'm from Maine. I was one of those migratory Mi'kmaq. And I am the only Mi'kmaq professor at Dalhousie that teaches in, on indigenous issues. And the only way I can get to do that is if somebody offers me a job, like a course, to do that. So even at Dalhousie and at most universities, the issues of Aboriginal education, of our history, has not been considered important. And all you have to do is scroll the CBC comments to see how dumb, okay, I said it, dumb people are. Colonialism has been opposed by one thing, and that's resistance. Mm -hmm. 
and when I think of my ancestors, I think of my mother who went to residential school and still brought us up in a Mi'kmaq way, even though we weren't on the reserve all the time. That's the education that I hang on to. The other thing I have to say is that I did an interview for CBC this morning, and they didn't want me to talk about law. And I thought, wait a minute, I, I get trained in law, I can talk all about law, please let me do it. No, too complicated for the listening audience. Why do some people listening to CBC were smart? Right? <laughs> I was starting listening to them myself like 15 years ago. I didn't even know. <laughs> I did, and I like C1. Um, <laughs> but the thing here is, is that the law is a tool that's been used by the colonizers to define us, to get rid of us, to take away our land, to take away our culture, our ceremonies. And now, what's happening is they're even taking away our right to attend esteemed institutions like Dalhousie University because they don't want to do what they have made the commitment to do, and it's their responsibility to pay for our education. They made that commitment. We didn't say, oh, please give us money. Like I got around on the CDC the other day, gimme, give gimme, give gimme. Give no, it's not about that. The government made a commitment. We have an Aboriginal right to education, to funding for post-secondary education, and we have to take back our education so it's not simply used as a tool of assimilation. You know what? Assimilation was trumped by racism. Because even if we try to be, even if I try to be a cute little lawyer, I'm still an Indian. And I have that big next on So I am saying right now, Aboriginal education, they, the government is is trying to transfer the jurisdiction back to the provinces. The Mi'kmaq people have jurisdiction over our own education. There's two statutes that say that. They can't change that. And when I say about the law, Constitution Act, Section 52, Supreme Law of Canada, you can't have anything that's in conflict with that or it's of no force and effect. Hello, Stephen. Did you take constitutional law? I don't think so. <laughs> At least not how it refers to us. So I think it's really important when we talk about education. And I'm going to try to be good. <laughs> is that we need education in this environment? I have three degrees, and I'm not saying that to brag. I'm saying that because. It was really hard. It was so hard. <laughs> Law school, ah! But you know what made it difficult? It wasn't because I had a lack of brain power, it was because of the racism I experienced. That's what made it difficult. And in my job at Dalhousie, I try to mitigate that for people. I try to create a positive environment at Dalhousie. And things have changed. And I'm happy for those changes. But now I'm really rambling. The last, and this is the last thing I want to say. The world was supposed to end on December 21st. <laughs> <laughs> My son went to Guatemala and the Mayan elders told him, don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, okay, we won't worry about it. But the world did end in a way. Because something happened, mm -hmm. and I think it is the Creator, higher power, God, whatever we want to call that spiritual power that brought people together. <coughs> and I support that power. I support the people that are involved in this movement. And our education, not only as getting our degrees and getting that part of it, we also deserve to have the education from our elders about our ceremonies. We need our land to do our ceremonies. We need our land to create space for all of us to live 
in a good way. I deserve to have the knowledge of my elders. I deserve that. And part of what Aboriginal education is about is to teach us how to be good Mi'kmaq men and women. And that is what we're about. So part of being that responsibility, part of having that responsibility is maybe it's getting a degree. Maybe it's doing something positive for your community. But it's also about our own Indigenous knowledge and tribal consciousness. And we cannot let that go. And to see the youth moving forward, not just from a political perspective, but from a spiritual foundation, is invigorating and hopeful. So, that's, no, thank you. Um, that means to stop. Um, no. <laughs> right to educate our children. We have the right, if we want to come to Dalhousie, we have the right to do that. The federal government has taken that responsibility for funding us on, and they did it in 1969 when like most people had like grade three, so it's like, wow, you can go to university. But that's where the, my transition year program, I call it mine, because I feel like it's mine too. Um, that's where that came from. And it's not because we're less than other people, it's because we didn't have the opportunity to get the same kind of <coughs> mainstream education. So TYP came into being, and we're still there. We're still teaching, we're still, it's really about negotiating, what I call negotiating the cultural divide. Because racism still exists. We still face that every day. And like I said on Tuesday, you know, people don't know the difference between a status or non-status Indian, so it doesn't, it's like, it doesn't really matter. Because we're all together as Aboriginal people, whether it's Van Carter or not. Because that's the government's definition of who we are. And we have to take the power back, whether it's through, we have to take the power back to define ourselves who we are and what we need to know and how we work with our elders and listen to our elders. That's our responsibility. And I really believe what someone said earlier that it might be just our indigenous knowledge that helps save this world. Because the water is the lifeblood of Mother Earth. We all come from water. When you're in your mother's womb, you are in the water. It is basic and fundamental. Those are the things that we have to learn so that we can move forward and take down Stephen Harper because he's a, as I said, on the Big Bang Theory. Oh, he's a dictator. Well, why'd you call him that? Well, I just added eater. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm so excited to have my first class today. I was really nervous and oh, because it's always scary to talk about colonialism and our history and our treaties and the spiritual foundation of where we come from. But I'm excited because it's an opportunity for me and for other people to learn. And I said, let's go forward, debate, create form our truth, find all our truths together. And that to me is what our education is about, whether you're doing an MSc in biology, you're doing a law degree, or you're sitting, most importantly, at your elders' side, listening. When I listen to my mother, tell me stories. And she didn't even know she was doing it. And I didn't know she was doing it either. Because colonialism would have killed us except for our strength and our spiritual foundation. So that's what I want to say about education. I can do all the legal stuff if you want, but I don't feel like it right now. We have jurisdiction. Hey. <laughs>